A few years back, I was working on a marine research project in Monterey Bay, California. Being out there on the water, miles away from land, really makes the ocean seem massive. The sea has always intrigued me ever since I was a kid. I believe what really draws me and other marine biologists is just how much we don't know about the sea. That day, like always, I was excited about what we might find underwater. The day began just like any other. My team and I threw on our windbreakers, grabbed our coffees, and set off from the pier. We had our daily routine pretty much nailed down. The exception today was our gear. We got some cool new tech we couldn't wait to use, mainly a remote-operated vehicle to check out the deeper parts of the bay that divers can't get to. When we anchored the boat, rocking on the waves, we were all pretty excited. The weather was just right with a cool breeze and sea air. Even the seagulls were around hoping we'd fish out something. Doing ocean research isn't just about marine conservation and analyzing stuff all the time. It can also be enjoyable and relaxing if you want it to be. When the boat arrived where we needed to be, we started to get the research equipment ready. Once we'd done a quick once over on the new underwater drone, we got ready to put it in the water. I was nervously excited, and my hands were shaking as I carefully operated the crane to lower the machine into the sea. Its strong lights made the water glow, which looked pretty cool. I was linked up to the ROV and used a joystick to guide it. I started to steer it further into the dark depths, lit up only by our lights. As usual, a bunch of fish and sea creatures came to check out the big metal thing we'd put in their home. We were watching the underwater scene on screens and were totally blown away by how cool it looked. We had cameras set up to record everything we saw. In the middle of it all, I had this weird feeling that we actually know only a small percentage of what lives in these deep parts of the ocean. Suddenly, this creature seemed to just appear on our screen, and everyone in the room just stopped. We didn't see it coming, it just seemed to appear out of nowhere. I struggled to comprehend what I was seeing. A massive figure, lit up by the ROV's lights, filled up the whole camera view. It was just like how birds swarm a fishing boat. That's how the smaller fish around it were acting. It was way bigger than anything that should have been in this area, and it just seemed different. It was huge, making our submersible look tiny on the monitor. The thing's size kind of cast shadows around it, highlighting its shape against the pitch black sea. It's hard to explain, but just the sheer size was mind-blowing, like looking at a mountain under the sea. As the huge creature swam near, it made the water around it move, which made us rock back and forth in an ominous way. It was pretty unsettling. We were all just watching it on the screen, our hearts beating fast. We couldn't do anything as it got closer. The creature had a long, snake-like body. It kind of moved smoothly without any impact from the water currents around it. I guess it's because it was pretty big, so the water couldn't really push it anywhere. It was hard to see cause of the dark water, but the lights we had on down there let us see a bit of its scaly skin, all shiny from the water. It stared straight at our vehicle for a bit. The vehicle's lights bounced off its huge, shiny eyes that glowed a spooky gold. It made me see how small we were compared to it. It was like a reality check. Like it was saying, sure humans might rule the land, but the sea is a completely different game. Suddenly, a huge fin, or perhaps a tentacle, popped out from its body, brushing past the ROV and knocking it aside like a toy. The screen glitched for a bit. I held the joystick really tight, my knuckles going all white. But then, the screen came back and what I saw literally took my breath away. We saw the creature in a really wild way. The remote control sub's lights brought out its shape as it swam away. Its body made these powerful ripples in the water. After we made sure it was gone, we pulled the ROV back in fast. Everything after that just blends together. I couldn't stop thinking about it, just kept playing it back in my head. That night, I was just sitting there watching the waves and felt a massive amount of respect and surprise for the sea and whatever it's hiding. When I left Monterey Bay and got back home, I told my team and other marine buddies about it. Some of them didn't believe me, but others said they'd had similar experiences. It felt good to know I wasn't alone. We've always known there's a lot we don't know about the sea, 
My experience just proved it. I've always been a bit of a loner. I enjoy the quiet and peace when I'm alone. It's comforting to me. I found my love for nature, forests, mountains, the sea, during these alone times. So one morning, I headed out on my own to Allegheny National Forest in Pennsylvania, just like any other trip I've done before. I really like the forest. It's like those big trees are telling old stories, and the leaves rustling are like the secrets of the forest. For a lone traveler like me, it feels like heaven. I got there early in the morning, just as dawn was breaking. When I got out of my truck, I saw this crazy view. It looked like a huge foggy blanket was draping the Allegheny Reservoir. It was pretty awesome and made me feel small. I had my binoculars, my camera, and I was super excited. I just had to go deeper into the woods. There was this light coming in through the leaves which made everything green. You could hear squirrels and birds in the morning. It smelled nice, like dirt and fresh plants, making you feel lively. It was quiet and peaceful. I was lost in my thoughts as I walked slowly into the woods, trying not to break the peaceful vibe that nature had. I stopped in a small open area and used my binoculars to see what birds I could spot in the trees. I was hoping to catch a thrush or maybe a tanager. Then out of nowhere, this weird sound came. It was like a mix of a deep growl and a long howl that just echoed through the forest. It was so surprising and different from the usual forest noises that it actually gave me the creeps. My heart was racing while I stood there, not moving, still holding binoculars to my eyes, looking around anxiously trying to figure out where that surprise sound was coming from. Was it a wild animal? Maybe something commonly found here that I wasn't aware of. And then I saw it. I saw someone, or something, move past the dense trees. It was huge and somewhat hidden in the fog. As soon as I noticed it though, it vanished. Totally freaked me out. Maybe a bear or an elk, or maybe something else. Something that lives hidden in this huge forest. Not sure. After that weird noise died out and everything in the woods went back to normal, I was left standing there equal parts scared and curious. I was nervous but too interested not to check it out. The thing I saw was about as high as a young tree with shoulders as wide as a big rock. It moved in a way that was pretty smooth but also pretty strange. I didn't want to blink and miss it. The creature quickly moved around bushes and jumped over logs, surprisingly quiet for its size. Its fur looked rough and its color shifted between light brown and red. When the sunlight hit it, it looked like a glowing ember in contrast to the green surroundings. From what I could see, it had a wide back, big arms, and, I think, a flat face. But I wasn't certain. The smell, though, that really scared me. It was really strong, like a rotten smell that seemed to stick in my nose. It was like a mix of old, dirty swamp water and something really gross. It made me really nervous and my heart started pounding and my hands got sweaty. Part of me was scared and wanted to run back to my truck, but I was just too curious. I mean, wouldn't anyone be fascinated if they saw something that seemed out of movie? I gotta admit, it was like a rush of adrenaline. Suddenly, the thing turned its head towards me and I just froze. I briefly saw its huge forehead under its noticeable brow. Then it was gone, vanished into the thick forest just as quiet as it came up. I stayed where I was, feeling like hours had passed. My heart was hammering in my ears. Everything around me seemed normal. The squirrels were making noise, and the birds were singing again. But I could tell something had changed, almost like a permanent change. But maybe that change was within me. That day I saw something really weird that I can't explain. It wasn't a bear or an elk. Could it have been a Sasquatch? It took forever but I finally motivated and walked back to my truck. My mind was going crazy. Every little sound, leaves rustling, branches creaking, it all freaked me out. My safe haven didn't feel safe anymore. That night, I dreamed about being back in the forest, staring at that creepy figure. I was scared, but also still strangely fascinated. But there's a part of me that's kind of fascinated by the unknown, that kind of wants to believe it was real. 
that I actually came face to face with something people only ever talk about in stories. So, whenever I think back to that chilly morning in Allegheny National Forest, I'm taken back to this scary, hypnotizing, and stunning moment. The most unforgettable thing I've ever experienced. Was it all in my head, or did it really happen? Guess I will never know. I'll always remember this one night at Mauna Kea, Hawaii, back in March 2015. The sky was super clear and completely stunning that day. I remember you could feel the cold, salty air coming in from the ocean. I'm really into astronomy, and the stargazing that night was just amazing. But it's not just about looking at stars for me, it's kind of like a quiet time for deep thinking. I've spent a lot of nights star watching. But that night at Mauna Kea really stands out, especially the way the Milky Way looked, all lit up right over me. I began preparing around 8 in the evening. I got my telescope, notepad, star map, and coffee ready. Everything was set. Before I look at the stars, I usually let my eyes get used to the dark. It helps me see the stars better. When my eyes adjust, I can see more stars appearing, with each one looking brighter than the last. I started off looking at Mars and writing down what I noticed. The planet was really bright that night, sort of reddish and really popping out against the other stars. I spent hours moving the telescope from Mars to the Orion Nebula, then to the Pleiades and so on. The small sounds my telescope was making kind of just mixed with the chill night. That's when I spotted something weird. All of a sudden, this metal thing flew across my telescope's view, totally not in the direction I'd mapped out with my stars. It was moving in weird ways, not like any plane or satellite I've seen before. Plus, it was totally quiet. I had to step back from my telescope for a second. I rubbed my eyes and was totally confused. Maybe I was tired, or I had too much coffee, but either way, I took a deep breath and looked again. It was still there, moving so fast it was almost just a blur. I tried to catch it in my telescope, and I could feel my heart beating fast from the excitement. It was kind of hard to make out exactly what it looked like because it was far away and the speed it was going at was crazy. Plus, it was glowing this weird metallic color. From what I could tell, it sort of had this triangle shape and the stars were reflecting off of it, making it look even weirder. It gave me the chills watching it fly across the dark sky so fast it didn't seem possible. I was trying my best to understand what I saw. Could it be some classified military project? Or maybe a type of new drone? The weirdest thing was that it made no noise at all. Then, like it could feel me staring, the thing stopped all of a sudden. It floated there in the sky, just hanging there like it weighed nothing. And in a blink of an eye, it shot across the sky in a zigzag way that no normal plane could do. As quickly as it showed up, it was gone. I kept trying to find it in the telescope but could find no further images of it. It totally disappeared, and with it, it took all of my interest in gazing anymore that night. So I packed up and headed home. I couldn't really sleep that night. I kept wondering about that thing flying across the sky. Was it something from our military, or something completely different? The idea that it might be from outer space was exciting, but also a bit scary. I mean, the idea that we're not alone in the universe didn't seem to be a mystery to me anymore. I now knew that we were not all alone. That night, it almost felt comforting. Like, we're not the only ones looking into emptiness, looking into the abyss. It felt like the emptiness was watching me. In the next few days, I kept thinking about that night and what I saw. I had no way to prove it, just a hard to believe story. Honestly, I'm not even sure what I saw that night. But I do know that seeing it really got me thinking about space a lot. It made me realize just how amazing the universe is. We're just tiny parts of it, but we're always trying to discover all its secrets, like we're the most important thing in it. But you know what? I don't think we are. Back in the day, I went to Washington State to check out how Mount St. Helens was recovering after the eruption. At that time, the eruption had happened 20 years prior, in 1980. 
I had done a lot of other environmental stuff, but being there just blew my mind. I was there to see how plants and animals were coming back after everything was destroyed by that volcano. It's quite a sight, watching how nature reclaims a once barren area. Now, it's a green space, though you can still see some old dead trees here and there. So, here I am, in the midst of this rejuvenation, observing the plants, noting the number of bird nests, and just taking in the environment. Yet, at the same time, I am very aware that there's something that seems a bit off. I had noticed some worrying things during the day. Huge paw marks in the ashes and messed up plants. Plus, I constantly felt like someone was watching me. I didn't think much of it, thinking maybe it was just the local wildlife taking back their territory. I mean, it really is a place like no other. By evening, I was pretty far from base camp and decided I should head back soon to beat nightfall. So, I packed my gear and was about to start my way back, and that's when I saw it. I noticed a weird shape near some burnout edges. It was as big as a bear, but looked more like a huge dog. Something inside me told me to stay away, but it just sat there in the dark, keeping an eye on me. The sunset lit it up in a creepy, firelight glow because of the volcanic ash in the air. Then, super quickly, it was just gone. Laughing a bit nervously, I quickly left and tried to forget about it, thinking maybe it was just the light playing tricks on me, or I was just too tired. That's what I thought up until I got back to base camp and smelled a hint of sulfur. And then, I got this weird chill that wasn't from the cold weather. I couldn't help but wonder if it was just all in my head, or if there was something truly horrifying hiding in the shadows of the now creepy yet beautiful Mount St. Helens. After I couldn't sleep one night and kept tossing and turning, I made up my mind to look into this mess further the next morning. When the day began, I was feeling quite nervous. There was still a weird sulfurous smell hanging around. It was a disturbing reminder of whatever weird stuff went down the night before. Walking back to the same spot, I remembered all about seeing something big and dark. A dog as big as a bear, hiding amongst the bushes. I half expected another crazy story to play out in front of me. Maybe I've been reading too many scary stories lately. But when that thing showed up again, standing there on the ridge, I felt like I'd walked right into a horror story. From far away, it looked like a dark dog. But when you got nearer, it looked strange. Its fur was a really deep red color, just like the burnt ground it was standing on, making it hard to see where it ended and the ground began. It had weird red glowing eyes that shone brightly. It was definitely a pretty intense sight, like some kind of fiery creature come to life. I couldn't move. Watching that thing jump down with such power and speed, it scared the heck out of me. I could hear it growling now, echoing around the quiet area. I was scared stiff, unable to move. The horrible smell of sulfur was really strong, just adding to the fear the creature was causing me. It continued straight at me, staring into my eyes the entire time, and then stopped just a few steps away from me, its red eyes glaring at me with a kind of quiet hatred. And then, once again, as quickly as it appeared, it was gone. It evaporated into the remains of what used to be a lush forest, leaving me looking at it fading into the distance. I let out a sigh of relief, quickly moving backward, then ran. I was pretty scared after what I saw. When I finally got back to camp, my legs were shaking so much I couldn't stand anymore. But I couldn't forget those glowing red eyes and that horrible smell, not to mention the growls. It messed up my sleep for weeks, turning it into nothing but nightmares. Science folks don't usually buy into fairy tales, but something happened that changed my mind. I just couldn't shake off what I had seen and it made me on edge every time I went back out into the field. I worked in places that had been through hard times and were starting to bounce back, but I never again ran into anything like that freaky dog. Still, when I catch a whiff of sulfur, it brings me right back to those days at Mount St. Helens. I used to be able to approach a dog like it was nothing. No second thought. No second guessing myself. Now though, now I hesitate or just ignore them completely. It was about three years ago when this happened. 
maybe three and a half now. Time goes by so fast. I had spent the day with friends playing mud ball. That's just football in the mud and rain. American football if that helps, since sometimes people think I'm talking about soccer. Anyway, we had played all day, smashing each other into the mud, flying into puddles. It was great fun. It was starting to get dark when we were slowing down. Everyone rehydrated and hung around shooting the breeze. One team lording over the other. You know how it goes with guys in sports. Even friendly competitions are fuel for the fire. We just can't help ourselves at times. I had driven with my friend Jeff, and people were beginning to head out for their respective homes. We stayed a little later than most, but eventually we started to walk back to the car. The parking lot was on the other side of the park, so it was a pretty good walk back. Jeff was tossing the ball to himself as we walked, and we were just rehashing the game and all the fun we had. People sometimes bring their dogs to the park, but most of them do it during the day. The park was pretty empty by now. We were some of the last ones to leave. A light rain started to fall, so we walked under the trees to try and keep it off our heads. We first heard like a low howling and thought someone's dog didn't like the rain and was letting everyone know it. A few minutes later, we saw a dog far off to our left, which I think was West. He was big and black with long pointed ears. He was sitting on top of a hill, still as stone. I thought it was kind of odd, and I told Jeff it looks like he's watching us. We laughed it off and kept walking to the car. We were almost there. I remember my teeth started to chatter a little bit from being soaked. We started to get nervous when we walked through this patch of trees, and the black dog was already on the other side. He'd have to move pretty fast for that to happen, but he was just sitting at attention again, watching us walk towards the parking lot. It was odd, but we really didn't think much of it. I mean, it was just a dog, right? About 10 minutes later, we get to the car, and the dog is there, sitting next to the driver's side door. We both stopped dead. He didn't make a sound, didn't attempt to move out of our way. He just sat at attention by the door. Me and Jeff just look at each other. We were acting ridiculous, so we started yelling, telling him to get going. Normal stuff. He just sat and stared at us. The weirdest thing was that his eyes seemed to be a bright green. I turned to Jeff and asked if that was right or not. I'm not a dog expert, but it seemed odd to me. He said he knew some dogs could have blue eyes, so he was pretty sure they could probably have green eyes. This dog's eyes though, they seemed brighter too, me, I don't know. Jeff got the brilliant idea to scare him away with the football, and that's when all hell broke loose. He aimed the ball at the front tire and launched it. The dog bared his teeth and lunged forward at us and we took off. I know you're not supposed to run from an animal chasing you, but we didn't really think about it. We just did it. You could hear him snarling and snapping at us from behind, barking, its teeth snapping together, its paws on the concrete. We just kept going until we couldn't run anymore, and then we pulled ourselves up into a tree. There was no dog behind us. We looked all around us and didn't see a thing. That's when we heard it howling again, snarling around us, around the tree we were in. But we didn't see the thing. It was darker than before, but we should have been able to see it. We didn't see anything around us move, unless it was from the light breeze picking up. It seemed to get louder around us. You could hear the nails of the dog on the tree, but we couldn't see him. Then just like that, it went silent, dead silent. There were no dog sounds, no birds, Nothing. We just sat in the tree, looking around, trying to spot something moving around us. How long were we in the tree? I really don't know. It seemed like a long time, maybe 40 minutes, maybe an hour. I guess it could have been much shorter, but it seemed like forever to us. It was Jeff who got brave and jumped down first. I followed him, and at first we just stood by the tree, watching and waiting. That's when it came out, rushing out of the brush at us and we took off again. I yelled to head for the parking lot. My chest was about to explode. I've never run so fast. It hurt to breath, and I was getting really tired. I hit the button to unlock the car on my key ring and pulled open the driver's side door as fast as I could. I did the same to shut it behind me. Jeff did the same, but that didn't stop the dog. He slammed into the car, barking, snarling, drooling, jumping up and down on the door, 
on the hood. His nails dug into the paint. Then suddenly he was gone. It was like a blink, and he seemed to disappear. I turned and looked at Jeff, and he looked at me, and I started the car and took off like a bat out of hell. People tell me it was probably a stray with rabies or something. That's why it was so aggressive. I don't know, though. There was something about that night, that dog, something else that I can't explain. I'm gun-shy around dogs now. We've been back to that park a few times. Nothing like that has ever happened again. Maybe it was a dog with rabies, I don't know.